Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be working on week 22 in my Project Life album for 2021. So this would have been the very last day of May and then the first like six days of June. For my spread I'm going to be using the June 2017 digital stories by the month kit from Allie Edwards. I have printed off some of the cards with journaling already on them and then I've also taken one of the physical, not physical, one of the digital four by six cards and turned it into three individual three by four cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my photos trimmed in half here and get everything laid out on my desk. While I'm doing that, I'm going to take you over to the computer and show you how I took the one card and made it into three cards in Photoshop Creative Cloud. So let's head over there, I'll show you that, and then when we come back over here to the desk, it will just have everything laid out and we'll dive into getting everything embellished and finished up for this week. Hey there friends, so before I get into actually putting together my Project Life spread for today, I wanted to show you how I turned this one 4x6 journaling card into three individual 3x4 journaling cards instead. I wanted to use a page protector that has nine of the 3x4 cards just so I could have more vertical photos than horizontal. Um, and I just had a bunch of photos this week. So really quick, let me show you how I did this. First of all, inside of Photoshop Creative Cloud, that's what I'm working on, I have gone ahead and pulled open the 4x6 journaling card that you see here on my screen. Now, before I open up anything new, I'm just going to go ahead and create all the components I need from this card. So first I'm going to go into the menu here on the left side and click on the second icon, which is my marquee tool. I am going to use the rectangle marquee tool. If you hold down on the button with your mouse, you can open up a sub menu to get different shapes. I just want the rectangle, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Now first, I'm going to come to the bottom of my card and I'm going to draw a rectangle, trying to keep this sentiment as close to the middle as possible. Um, I'm going to draw a rectangle around it and then release, and that's going to put the little marching ants all the way around that. I will right click into the middle, and then I'm just going to layer via copy. So we'll click on that, and it's going to create its own layer. So if I hide my original card, you'll see that I have this loving these stories sentiment there in the middle. Let's bring that card back up though. So now I'm going to click on my background layer in the bottom right hand menu, which is my layers panel down here in the bottom. Um, with that selected, I'm going to keep my marquee tool and this time I'm going to draw a box around this number one sunburst. So I'm getting the whole thing in there, keeping it kind of in the middle, same as before. We're going to right click in the middle of it and layer via copy. Great, so now let's go back down to the background again and we're going to do this two more times. So one for the number two, again, keeping it in the middle, right click, layer via copy. And every time you create a new layer, you do have to go back down into your layers panel and select the background again. So just keep that in mind. One more box and that looks pretty good. Right click, layer via copy, and now we have all of our, th our four pieces, I should say. So let me hide the original card. And we know, actually I'm gonna grab my move tool. So the move tool is the very top tool in the left uh, menu here, sidebar menu. So with my move tool, I'm going to click on the loving this story so I can move this around if I want to. And I'm just going to hide it by clicking on the eye next to the layer. So then it goes away. And then I'm going to next click on the number three and let's hide that one and the number two and let's hide that one. So that leaves me with only the number one. I need to make sure that that layer is selected so I could click it here or I could click it down in the menu. And then I'm going to grab my eraser tool from the left sidebar and I'm just going to erase the sections where the other sunburst is seen. So that one looks great. So let's hide the number one and let's bring up the number two. We're gonna click on the layer to make sure it's selected and then I can erase the portions of the other sunbursts. 
like so. And then we can hide the number two, bring up the number three, make sure we have that layer selected, and then we can, one last time, erase those out. Okay, so I'm going, I'm going to change back over to my move tool. I'm going to bring everything back up except for the background. I don't care about the background right now. And what I want to do is create a new canvas. So I'm gonna go up to File and New, or you can use the hotkeys Control or Command N. With that, I want to create a three by four card. So I'm going to make sure that my um, size here is in inches. We're going to do a three inch by four inch canvas at 300 pixels per inch. We'll hit create, and that's going to be my three by four card. Now let's go back to our loving these stories card here. First, I'm going to select or click on top of loving these stories. With that selected, I'm going to copy control C and then go back to my three by four and control V to paste. Then I can move this down to the bottom. And if I want, I can make sure it's in the middle by transforming it, control T that puts the little, um, sizing piece around the outside so you can see exactly where it lines up. Get it in the middle, the guideline, the pink guideline lets me know it's right in the middle, and then I can hit enter and it will sit there. Let's go back to our original card and this time I'm going to click on the number one so it's selected in my layers panel. I'm going to copy it, control C, go back over to my three by four card and control V to paste. And that puts my sunburst here right in the middle. I'm going to bring it up to the top and this is going to be card number one. So because I like the way that this looks, I can merge all these layers together. I can save it as a PNG if I want and then all the pieces will be together. If I want to add my text onto here, I can just create a text box and then type in my journaling for that card. For the other two, I did the exact same thing. So we'll pretend here that my text box is gone and my number one is gone. So I would do the same thing, you know, select the number two, control C to copy, control V to paste, move it up to the top. And then that one's in place and good. And then I would do the same thing for number three. When I did this, I saved them as three different files. Oh, I can see I missed a piece there. Let's erase that, there we go. Um, Yes, when I did this for me, I saved them as three different files. So I had loving these stories, number one, number two, number three, and then um, added my journaling in to create my spread, which you can see here on my page. So I've got number one, number two, and number three. All right, you guys. So um, let's go ahead back over to my craft table and we'll actually get this week put together. All right, so now I've got everything laid out here on my desk and we're just going to work on adding the finishing touches onto this spread. So the first thing I'm doing here is adding a label sticker. This is one of those really long skinny ones that was included in one of the One Little Word add-on kits from 2020, I believe. I really like the scale of that label and I wish that there were more of those available to just buy whenever because they're awesome for just adding your dates on to a card like this. So I just stuck it right underneath my June Stories title card there and then date stamped in the May 31st through June 6th, yes, June 6th dates. Then I'm going through some of my uh, embellishments here to try and figure out how do I want to embellish my cards or my photos for this spread? I'm looking for things that have the right color scheme. So I pulled out these puffy stickers, uh, hearts that are from, I believe the friends story kit from Allie Edwards. And then I also have some of the asterisk chipboard stickers that were from the storytelling basics collection. So I've got both of those that I'm debating between using. And then I'm also going to look through my tiny phrase stickers for a sticker sheet that has sentiments that would work for this particular week, but then also ones that have a color that would complement the colors in the kit that I'm using as well. So I've pulled out two that have a peach type of hue to them. And then I've got one that is gray and one that is white. I'm going to decide against the white. And then also um, one of the peach colored ones were a little bit thicker than the other. It was from Week in the Life. And then the other one, I believe the skinnier ones were from the Stories by the Month kit from past years and past months. 
ultimately, I decide I really like the look of the gray. And I also really like the look of these chipboard. So I'm going to put away the hearts and I'm going to put away the peach colored sentiments and just work with the sheet of um, white and silver and black, but I'm only, gonna, I'm only going to use white and silver. And then also I'm going to use a gray sentiment over each one of them. Now the nice thing with these chipboard stickers is there are both the larger size and the smaller size, which was perfect because that allowed me to add something to almost every single card. The only cards that I did not add any extra embellishing to were the cards that have the journaling on them and then the sentiment card at the bottom that says every summer has a story. I just left those ones blank. For everything else, I added one of the chipboard stickers and one of the sentiments. Oh, I forgot that I did pull out my multicolored pack and I used one of the blue colored ones on this picture of the lake and the sky. I felt like uh, white was maybe a little bit too stark. It would have been fine, but I just like the way that the blue is a little bit more subtle on the picture there. So in terms of pictures and what I'm documenting, almost all of these pictures except for one comes from the weekend. The one that you see in the upper left-hand corner of me with like a super weird look on my face, that was a picture that I took in the car of Isabella and myself as we were on the way to take her to the doctors for the second time. So last week or the week prior to this one, I had taken her and Jonah to the doctors. One had a cough, the other had a fever. I was worried, you know, could this be COVID? So they both got tested for COVID. Izzy got tested for strep throat. Everything was negative and they determined that it was just a common cold. Well, flash forward a week later, and she started having sores appear on her face. Now she gets cold sores almost every time she's sick, but this time she had a large one on her chin and that concerned me. So we went back to the doctors again to get some medication. They gave her an antibiotic and now it's been a couple more weeks since then and her sores are all healed up and she's doing much better. So all is well, but the face is because of going to the doctors again. And then everything else was from the weekend. Erin and I, um, along with my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my niece, we all went up to Mackinac Island for the weekend to attend Erin and Alex's childhood best friend's wedding. So they have known their friends since they were three and stayed really good friends throughout their entire lives. So both of them were in the wedding. One was the best man and one was the best best man as he proclaimed himself to be. That would be my husband. And um, we just really enjoyed ourselves being up in Mackinac and seeing them get married. All right, friends, that completes my spread for today. I really, really love the way that this one turned out to me. It's so simple and um, there's just so much white space. It just has a very classic look to it and I super love that about it. Plus the stories turned out really nice and the photos from last week were also super great. So I don't know, this one's just one of my favorites that I've done in a while. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this spread come together. If you did, I would love a thumbs up down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're there so you can see all of my future crafty videos. And if you are looking to see even more than what's here on YouTube, consider checking out my Patreon, which I have a link to down in the description box below. Uh, over on Patreon, I have exclusive content that comes out each and every week, including some additional Project Life spreads for one of my older albums. So if you liked this, you might like that as well. All right, friends. Well, until next time, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will catch you all in the next video. <laughs> Bye friends.